What do you make of, uh, of his outfit? I didn't really get to see him. I mean, he, he got to... You gotta do all those shenanigans to just cool down the moment. I'm an OG. I've been doing this shit for a long time. You want to go? What the fuck I'm gonna do with that belt, man? Let's be real. Quite solid. Hey, Tom, you you, you've been the questioner for a long time, though, for a lot of press conferences. You know, when you're dealing with Jake Paul, it's kind of like a whole circus, really. I like, just stick to the facts. Is, is it just a little bit annoying? I stick to, to the facts. Let, let him do his show. That's why y'all here, right? So why am I in this show? All I'm doing is sticking to the facts. You're getting his ass whooped on Saturday. That's all I need to really talk about. Now that you fought Jake, where do you rank him in like the fighters you face in the UFC? Um, it's tough because it's boxing. I can't rank anybody. That was my first boxing fight. So um, it's, 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 it's similar because we're punching each other, but it's completely different. The round time is different. You know what I mean? The clinching is different. You know, uh, the, the finishing, you know, is way different. So the motherfucker hit the ground in MMA, you get on top of him and you just keep wailing until the referee peel you off. In boxing, you don't know if they're going to, you know, let him continue or not. So um, I can't really compare it. That was my first boxing fight, so I can only compare him to that. And um, I think he's going to be a better fighter. Obviously, he's continuing training. I'm a better fighter. Uh, when I look at him in the face, I look like he want business. I want business. So you guys in for a treat on Saturday. Tyron Jake said that he would do MMA, that he would fight in MMA. Do you he believe him? He's fucking alive. Let's do it then. If you want to, let's make, you want to make a bet, let's make a bet. You want to fight MMA, come and fight me. You know I mean, I came to boxing. I went up fucking the weight class and a half. Come to MMA, we fight at middleweight, and you'll really see what it is. Maybe the trilogy in MMA, two boxing. I mean, I don't care. I just want to keep beating them up. Would you even be in the middle like kickboxing? <laughs> this dude is coming out with the randoms. All right, anybody else? Are, are you at least a little bit, I guess, impressed by his overall skill set the first time you fought him? No, I, guys, they got go look back on what I said the first time. Look back what I said I was going to do. Look back at what I said I felt like this fight. I said from the beginning, this is a real fight. This is not the YouTuber and MMA fighter. This is not the celebrity. This is not everything that's going on right now. This is a real fight. I said it's going to look like a real fight. And I said that from the beginning. It did look like a real fight. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't surprised. I knew it was going to be very similar to the way that it ended up going. Um, I thought I got the victory this time around. I always did, I always did best in MMA with the minor. I mastered the minor. I had a PhD in figuring out how to get there a half a second faster than my opponent, how to make one small adjustment that made the difference. In this fight, you'll see that. You may not see it, actually, but it'll happen. you need a knockout and not, not have to go to the judges? No, I, I'm going for a knockout, and if I go for a knockout for eight rounds straight, I shouldn't inevitably get the win, but um, the knockout is what I passionately want. And I won't go out of, I mean, the experience tells me don't go out of your way, don't go crazy hunting for the knockout, because that's usually when you either don't get it, you exhaust your energy trying for it, or you walk into something that wasn't meant for you to get hit with. How confident you are? I'm really confident. Tyron, do you think um, the perception of Jake has changed at all since like maybe the beginning of, of this year Look in some him. ways? I mean, I mean, he got humbled. Like, he really lost. Like, he's fighting this fight out of pride. He want to prove to everybody because he gives so many fucks about what people think. I give zero. I have none. I've been reaching around, checking for him. I have not found one fuck to give about what people think about me. But think about before this fight. You know what I mean? I wasn't the fucking ambassador of, you know what I mean, all of MMA. Some people really didn't fuck with me. They didn't know me. This gave people a chance to get to know me and get to know what I stood for. So now people are bantering behind me because, one, they don't want to see this motherfucker win. They're tired of the gravy train with him. Two, they say, you know what, I should fuck with this dude. I, I like what he stands for. He a real dude. So um, for me, it's, it's always been the same. Like, I can't really speak on what he's doing, his mindset, um, but I know he cares too much. And his pride can get him in trouble, and it's going to do so on Saturday. Tyrant, um, you're, you're talking about his, um, his pride and stuff like that, but, you know, when you took the loss of a lot of people in the MMA community kind of looked at it like, damn, you know, Tyron Woodley, the future Hall of Famer, we expected him to win. Did your pride take a little bit over here from taking that uh, I thought I won, but at the end of the day, you know, um, humility is the one thing that keeps you in this game. And if you find a way to, to maintain that, that's how you have longevity. So um, humility showed me that I had more work to do, which I already knew, and I got back to it. In terms of how you feel about your opponent's like or dislike, do you like him anymore or dislike any, him anymore? I, I can't like him because I got to fight him. You know, in MMA, we just get too buddy-buddy. Everybody want to give window love and hug and kiss after the fight. No, fuck that. We scrapped it. We saw at the end of the first fight, I wasn't coming to Kumbaya with him. No, I beat your ass. Let's do it again. I think I got to stay in that mindset. And some guys in our sport have done that, and it's, and it's enabled them to separate, you know, the respect you may have from them. 
and the respect for the victory you need to get. So for me, no, I don't hate him. Um, I have no feelings towards him. I don't dislike him. I, I'm indifferent about him. But I hate that he think he can beat me, and I hate that he can walk around and say he did. Let's talk your mind with him. Let tattoo. everybody else get a question, my man. You've been a little question hall. When you were getting your finger <laughs> tattooed, what were you thinking? Like, what was going through your mind as you're sitting there? This is, hey, it's Khabib would say, this is the number one bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrant, Shout out to question. Khabib, too. Uh, yeah. Why you be having your tripod high taller than you, man? You be scaring me. <laughs> I don't even be know who be asking the question. Hey, What's up, my dog? Short King Nation. But anyways. What's your name? Matt Tucker. Matt Tucker. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Put respect on it. Respect, man. Do you have any worries about not getting a fair judging decision after the last fight? Man, Cleveland was his hometown. And, you know, I started thinking, like, damn, if I was a judge and a commissioning body, I don't know that Cleveland has ever had a boxing match of that magnitude in the city, ever, in the history of Cleveland. If I'm looking at a close round, which there are many close rounds, uh, I'm an edge towards Jake, and that's a shitty thing to have to think about. But, you know, let's be real. This sport is not, you know, everybody that's judging don't box. They may not even know what the fuck they're watching. They may look at crowd. It's something like that. If I win every moment, if I win the exchange, if I win the wing, if I win the cutoff battle, if I win the counter battle, if I make him evade punches, if I press him, if I win each moment, you know what I mean? It's going to, one, open up the knockout for me. Two, it should give a, a, a clear and decisive um, judgment for each round. Willie, over, um, overall with the last fight, I know there was like a steroid drug testing thing. Uh, yeah, they're testing this time. They didn't test last time. I don't care what nobody say. How's the drug testing situation for this? Year? Um, I mean, to be honest, it? think about this. I'm already going to fight him. He can be on horse, fucking steroid, tranquilizer. It don't matter. I'm going to fight him. We won't find out to the results and afterwards. And if it tests positive that he was on drugs, it doesn't matter. My plan is to get the victory. And if I lose, I'm not going to be like I lost because of that. I just think that the playing field should be even. I feel like when your time is done in a sport, you should be done. I feel like if you feel like you need an extra advantage, go for an extra run. Train a little bit harder. Wake up earlier. Go to sleep. Go to I me. Mean, wake up earlier and fucking really take your time valuable. So I, I feel like God made boxing and mixed martial arts and all these sports so unique that everybody can kind of find their window. You may not be a power puncher. You may be a volume puncher. All right? You may have good combination or you may be a one-hitter quitter. Find your niche. You shouldn't be um, injecting drugs into your body to try to get an edge. I think that's some bitch ass shit, to be honest. Tyron, aside from the, all the shenanigans and everything, do you think that some of what he's done uh, has some merit, giving you know fighters opportunity to make more money? I don't know. I, that type of like, like I can't feel a way about him. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know his intent. I don't know his purpose. You know what I mean? There's so much show going on with him. It's, all I can focus on is Saturday night. He thinks he can beat me. I'm going to beat his ass. Everything else, I just really got to put to the to the wayside. If it's his real intent. Kudos, come on, you know what I mean? But let's not act like we don't know how taxes work. When you're donating extra purse money, you know what I mean? It's, it could be a low-key low way of, you know, managing his tax liability. So, But I'm not an accountant, and that's not my job. Aside from that stuff, though, I mean, like, the opportunities, uh, maybe it's giving fighters more of an idea, like maybe MMA fighters who are in the UFC. I mean, maybe fighters I in general, they should start saying, I'm the fucking fighter. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Y'all can't make this show without us. Mm -hmm. Y'all can't put on a show without us. We understand, we appreciate the opportunity, we appreciate the platform, we appreciate the pay to go out there and show people our skills, but it's still a showing our skills. Sometimes we fall in love with the promotion and the promoter and the people that are putting on the show too much and we forget who we are. We forget how important the fighters. Without fighters, there's no fucking show. And I think maybe that, that, that intrigues some different thought processes of these guys to recognize how valuable we are and really start to like see their value. So if that's what it's doing, then kudos to it. Will you advocate them for a fighter's union? Man, when I was at the top, nobody was really fucking with the way I was moving because I didn't, I didn't budge, I didn't kiss pinky rings, and I did what I thought and I did what I believed. Do I feel like I'm going to kumbaya with my ops, the people that was talking shit about me, the people that was trained by promotion to sit on the press conference and bash me and find everything? No, it's not going to happen. There's no unity. You got to have a unity for a union. So once the fighters recognize that, yeah, I can want to fight you. Did I want to fight Nate and Nick Diaz and Bisbing and GSP and Carlos Khan and Robbie Brown? Absolutely, yes. But it's because I respected them. I was really fans of them, and I really thought they were the best, and I wanted to prove myself I was the best. It's a way we can do that and sell this fight, but still have that respect. And at the end of the day, when we say, hey, you know what? If it's us versus them, without us, it's no fucking fight. Let's rally up and let's do that. Until that happens, 
I mean, all that's gonna happen is me go out there and say what I say and mean what I say, and everybody else gonna go in the corner and be quiet, and then they gonna throw the black flag on me. So I'm out for my bread, I'm out for my family, and that's what the union, I'm unionizing my family. So my grandkids, grandkids will never have to work a day in their life. Yeah, I'm ready. Appreciate you.